Hi, good day. Welcome to our web class. This is Teacher Jeans. We will tackle your Chapter 2, Week 2 for your Organization and Management subject. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to be able to explain the functions, roles, and skills of a manager. You can also watch my other videos in relation to this subject at my YouTube channel, Teacher Jeans. So let us define first what is a manager. So, manager is an individual who is in charge of a certain group of tasks or a certain subset of a company. So, a manager often has a staff of people who report to him. And manager's job is to lead the staff. He is heading towards the achievement of a common goal. So, he makes sure that the organization's goals are carried out by his department based on the plan set by the organization. And although the job of a manager is so hard to describe and there is no specific job description that would fit for a particular managerial position, there are different industries that have different job descriptions of how they envision their managers to be. So. Managers just don't go out and haphazardly perform the responsibilities. Good managers discover how to master the five basic functions. The planning, organizing, staffing, leading, and controlling. So the first function of a manager is planning. So it is the basic function of management and it deals with plotting and shutting down of action plans and decisions in advance to achieve the predetermined goals of the organization. So the manager here plans the future course of actions, systematically thinking about ways and means to accomplish the set goals. And this step involves mapping out exactly how to achieve a particular goal. So say, for example, the organization's goal is to improve company sales. So the manager first needs to decide which steps are necessary to accomplish that goal. And these steps may include increasing advertising, inventory, and sales staff. So these necessary steps are developed into a plan. And when the plan is in place, the manager can follow it to accomplish the goal of improving the company sales. Next one, we have organizing. So it is a process of bringing together physical, financial, and human resources and developing productive relationship among them for the achievement of organizational goals. So managers must figure out the number of manpower needed to get the task and the jobs were done. So here, organizings involve delegation and coordination among the staff. Okay, so after a plan is in place, a manager needs to organize her team and materials according to her plan. So again, assigning work and granting authority are two important elements of organizing. So the third one, we have staffing. It is the determination of personal needs and the selection, orientation, training, and continuing evaluation of the individuals who hold the required positions identified in the organizing process. So the purpose of staffing is to put the right people on the right job. So it involves manpower planning, recruitment, training and development, performance appraisal, and of course, for the promotion of the employee. So after a manager discerns his earliest needs, he may decide to beef up his staffing by recruiting, selecting, training, and developing the employees. So a manager in a large organization often works with the company's human resource or what we call the HR department to accomplish this goal. So next we have leading. So leading here, the managers must supervise, lead, motivate, coach, train, 
guide and direct his subordinates. So, it is the same thing with directing. So, direct his, okay, this is his subordinate to work efficiently and effectively. So, a manager here needs to do more than just a plan, more than just organize and staff her team to achieve a goal. So, she must, what? She must also lead. So, leading involves, again, it involves motivating, communicating, guiding, and encouraging. And it requires the manager to coach, assist, and problem solve with the employees. So, as mentioned, um, the elements of the leading as function of the manager. So, it involves supervision, motivation, leadership, and communication. So, for supervision, so it implies overseeing the work of subordinates by their superiors. And it is the act of watching and directing work and the workers. So, next one, the motivation. So, it means inspiring, stimulating, or encouraging the subordinates with zeal to work so it must um it could be positive negative monetary non-monetary incentives so um those are the in um intrinsic uh, motivations and other motivations that are applicable for the employees so next we have leadership so it may be defined as a process by which Manager guides and influences the work of subordinates in the desired direction. And the last one, communication. So it is very important to have a healthy communication and open communication within the organization. So it is a process of passing information, experience, opinion from one person to another. So it is a bridge of understanding okay and the last function is what we call controlling so according to Kuntz and O'Donnell it is a measurement and correction of performance activities of subordinates to make sure that the enterprise objectives and plans desired to obtain them are being accomplished so after the other elements are in place the planning organizing staffing leading so a manager's job is not finished he needs to continuously check results against goals and take any corrective actions that are necessary to make sure that his areas plans remain on track so all managers at all levels of every organization perform this functions but the amount of time of a manager spends on each one depends on both the level of the management in the specific organization controlling has the following steps first you have to establish standard performance and then you have to measure the actual performance you have to compare the actual performance with the standards and apply corrective action a manager wears many hats so not only is a manager a team leader but he or she is also a planner organizer cheerleader coach problem solver and decision maker so all rolled into one and these are just um few of the managers roles so in addition managers schedules are usually jump up so whether they're busy with employee meetings, unexpected problems, or strategy sessions, managers often find little spare time on their calendar. So, and that doesn't even include responding to email. So one of the most significant research as to the role of manager in an organization comes from Henry Mintzberg. So he is a Canadian researcher who believes that a manager's work is never really done.
done. So, do you agree with that? So, first, these roles fall into three categories. So, we have interpersonal, informational, and decisional. So, the interpersonal, so this role involves human interaction. So, it composed um, the figurehead, the leader, and the liaison. Next, we have the informational. So, this role involves the sharing and analyzing the information. So, this composed of the monitor, disseminator, and the spokesperson. The last one we have, decisional. So, um, obviously, this role involves decision making. So, it composed of the entrepreneur, the disturbance handler, the resource allocator, and the negotiator. So, for the interpersonal, we have the figurehead. So, the figurehead performs ceremonial and symbolic duties such as greeting visitors, um, signing legal documents. So, here, in these situations, so you are not making decisions but serving as a representative of the organization, so as a figurehead, you also aim to inspire your team to complete goals and tasks. So an example of responsibility in the figurehead role is when you attend a social lunch or event with a client. So you are there to promote your company or team and project up as a positive professional image. And the next one, we have leaders. So the leader here direct and motivate subordinates, training, counseling, and communicating with the subordinates. So again, so the leader managerial role refers to your duty as a manager to oversee the performance of your staff. So overall, you aim to manage the team and the responsibilities of each member to ensure you reach the objectives effectively so some of your duties in this role include um, providing guidance um, another example we have you have developing and motivating staff and performing evaluation so um, another example for this is your team may have a specific sales goal it aims to reach one month so as a leader you would communicate your expectations to team members and ensure that they understand them and throughout the month, you would check in with them regularly. Okay, so you have to check in with them regularly to monitor their progress and may provide resources or delegate tasks as needed to help them achieve that goal. The next one we have, liaison. So here, the liaison maintains information links both inside and outside organizations. So via use email of email phone calls and meetings so here in the liaison role you create and maintain internal and external relationships so you serve as a connection between different groups of people to ensure that um it works run smoothly so as a liaison you can transfer knowledge or information to members across organizations chain of command or communicate between stakeholders and employees to ensure projects remain on task. So, in some situations, you may bring members of your external network into the company to help achieve your organizational goals more efficiently. So, for example, as a manager, you would communicate regularly with your employees but also interact with your clients. So, in your client conversations, you can gain insights on what their needs are and then relay that information to your employees. So now that they have an understanding of the client's expectations, you can ensure that they work. They here means your employees to fulfill those needs and deliver a successful result. So let's proceed to the informational. So the first one here is um, manager is also doing the task to monitor. So, um, monitor here in the monitor rule, role, I mean, you seek information related to your organization such as um, 
potentially impactful industry changes. So, your research includes both external and internal sources. So, once you gather all the relevant information, you will analyze it to identify and solve potential problems. So, monitoring responsibilities also include assessing the current operations of the organization and identifying potential opportunities for improvement. So, for example, um, you may use your um, customer feedback to determine how you can improve your existing product line. And you also need to monitor the industry trends such as products launched by your competitors and your regulatory changes that your company may need to follow. So when you understand what is occurring in your industry, it ensures your company um, meets the business standards and remains competitive. Next one, you have the disseminator. So the disseminator, um, it forwards information to other organization members and also send memos and reports and make phone calls. So as a disseminator, you receive messages from internal and external sources that you convey to the appropriate individuals. And you can transmit this information in both verbal and can also written format. So usually um, this situation refers to the valuable or otherwise important information that will benefit your organization or provides guidance on tasks your employees need to complete. So for example, um, after researching industry trends, you may have developed a proposal for a new product design. And you would then submit this proposal to your upper management for approval and also provide it to your employees. So providing the proposal to your employees allows them to what? To familiarize themselves with the project and enables you to determine how to delegate that task. Okay, so the third one, the spokes person so spokesperson here transmit information to outsiders through speeches reports and memos so here in the spokesperson role again you represent your organization and convey information such as goals or policies to the external stakeholders so if you work within a large organization so you may need to serve as a spokesperson of your team and represent it during internal meetings or events so in this situation you may need to provide insights related to your team's performance and goals to achieve um your goals so here to achieve your goals to the um upper management or the other department so for example um your spoke person's responsibilities may require you to attend the annual shareholders meeting so at this meeting you may inform the attendees about the quantifiable results or achievements your team achieved that year such as sales numbers so you may also discuss the strategic business goals you aim to achieve within the next year so the Another for the decisional, you have there, entrepreneur, okay? So for the entrepreneur, um, you initiate improvement projects, you identify um, new ideas, you delegate the idea to um, the responsibility to others. So obviously it involves um, responsibilities related to organizing and running business processes so these responsibilities may include solving problems and developing and implementing new ideas as i have said or strategies and as an entrepreneur um your ideas or your decisions um, often promote innovative solutions that move the organization forward so if you notice slow sales on one of your organization's key offerings, for example, you may decide to develop a new marketing strategy using social media to solve that issue. 
So next one, disturbance handler. So here, you take corrective action during the disputes or crisis and resolve conflicts among subordinates and also adapt to environment crisis. So when your organization or team faces unexpected challenges, you take the role of a disturbance handler to help manage the issue. So these challenges can be both internal or external. So whether a client um, backs out of a contract or you discover a conflict between colleagues. So in these situations, your employees will expect you to take charge to solve the issue and maintain productivity. So for example, um, the managers often receive training in conflict resolution skills. So if a conflict arises between two members of your team, you must handle the situation objectively while ensuring to collaborate on a solution that benefits all parties. So no biases. You often must act quickly to ensure that operations continue to run smoothly and receives a little interruption as possible. Okay, so next one you um, have to do as the resource allocator. So here you decide who gets resources, scheduling, budgeting, and setting priorities. So you are responsible for managing and distributing resources. So again, you make um, you make the decisions and how those materials will be best be used or utilized or applied throughout the organization or team. And these resources will vary from um, funding to equipment to staff members. So for example, if you control the organization's budget, you will determine how to divide funding amongst your departments based on their needs or goals. And the last one, you are also a negotiator. So you represent department during negotiation of union contracts, um, sales, purchases, budgets, represent department interests. So, so obviously you participate here in direct negotiation situation. So these negotiations may occur with external parties. So where you will represent the interest of your organization. So you may also host negotiations with internal parties such as other departments of your team members. And successful negotiations will require you to gain buy-in by appealing to the interests and needs of the other parties. So for example, you may enter a negotiation with an employee over their salary. So if you cannot meet their monetary request, you may negotiate to a lower number but Provide additional benefits such as for vacation days, okay, to make the offer more attractive. And not everyone can be a manager. So certain skills or abilities to translate knowledge into action that results in desired performance are required to help other employees become more productive. So... Um, most management books identify three types of skills that are essential for a successful management process. So, um, this fall under the following categories, you have technical skills, um, conceptual skills, and interpersonal skills. So, for conceptual, here, also, let's start first with the technical. So, for technical skills, um, a manager must possess specific knowledge and the ability to use different techniques to achieve what they want to achieve. So these skills requires the ability to use a special proficiency or expertise to perform a particular task. So for example, um, um, the accountants, engineers, market researchers, and computer scientists are examples of um, technical skills okay so um, they should possess technical skills you cannot be and you cannot do um, financial statements if you are an engineer 
You cannot build buildings if you are just an accountant. Okay, so managers acquire these skills initially through formal education and then further develop them through training and job experience. So, technical skills are most important at the lower levels of management. So, next one we have conceptual. Okay, so conceptual skills, the manager must have the knowledge or the ability to see the big picture of any given situation to be able to create ideas and visualize plans for the future. So here, the skill calls for the ability to think analytically. So analytical skills enable managers to break down problems into smaller parts or to see the relations among the parts and to recognize the implications of any one problem for others. So as managers, um, you assume an ever higher responsibilities in the organizations and so they must deal with more ambiguous problems that have long-term consequences. So again, managers may acquire these skills initially through formal education and then further develop them by training and job experience. Then they hire the management level the more important conceptual skills become. And the last one, we have the interpersonal skills. So here, for the interpersonal skills, or what we call the human skills. So this skill pertains to interpersonal relationship and the ability to work well, well with the other people. So here, um, this skill demonstrates the ability to work well in cooperation with others. So human skills emerge in the workplace as a spirit of trust, um, enthusiasm, and genuine involvement in interpersonal relationships. So a manager with good human skills has a high degree of self-awareness and a capacity to understand or empathize with the feelings of others so here a manager with um good human skills um are very important no to um to be sensitive enough with the feelings of other people so some managers are naturally born with great human skills while others improve their skills through classes or experiences so no matter how human skills are acquired they're critical for all managers because because of the highly interpersonal nature of the managerial work and although all three categories contain skills essential for managers their relative importance tends to vary by level of managerial responsibility so um, to add up for this topic, um, the business and the management educators are increasingly interested in helping people acquire technical, here this conceptual, the interpersonal or the human skills, and develop specific competencies or specialized skills that contribute to high performance in a management job. So um, I will be mentioning um, some skills and personal characteristics um, that are other business and other schools, business schools to um, are urging you know, to help their students develop. So first, um, we have leadership. Okay, you have heard um, many times about leadership. So leadership, um, the ability to influence others to perform tasks. Another you have self-objectivity. So here, um, there is an ability to evaluate yourself realistically. And you must also learn about analytic thinking. So here, um, this is the ability to interpret and explain patterns in information. Another one, behavioral flexibility. So this ability to modi um, modify personal behavior to react objectively rather than 
subjectively to accomplish organizational goals. Also, this is very important na so oral communication. So, your ability to express ideas clearly in words. Also, written communication. So, your um, ability to express ideas clearly in writing. And also, personal impact. So, the ability to create a good impression and instill confidence. Another one, resistance to stress. So, your ability to perform under stressful conditions. And the last one, tolerance for uncertainty. So, your ability to perform in ambiguous situations. And that's all for your week two. See you in your week three topic. Thank you.